Hello, the practitioner here. I came across something rather funny again from the um, uh, evangelical uh, tract distributors. That's the uh, Alberta, Canada um, evangelical spread. It's uh, not quite Jeho as uh, fun as debunking as Jehovah's Witnesses, but uh, I think this one's going to be fun. Um, this one's called Facts Are Stubborn Things. And uh, they basically, uh, I'm going to read this. Uh, this is uh, a bit funny, but this is the sort of stuff that uh, these are like all the illogical arguments that have been used to support um, religion and the like, pretty well summed up into one pamphlet. I hope you guys will enjoy this, um, uh, fellow atheists and the like. You should, you guys, this should be fun. So let me start reading the so-called facts for you. Um, war is a fact. You can doubt, disbelieve, and deny that there was a world war or a Korean war, but thousands of white crosses spotting the cemeteries of the world cry out that these were wars. Facts are stubborn things. Well, there are other confirmers for war, but that's, okay, so that's the reasonable start. But after that, everything goes downhill. Allow me to read the next one. God is a fact. Uh, skipping over script, scriptural quotes. If you were to find a 21-jewel watch lying on the ground, you would not say that it just happened. No, it is too intricate. It had to have an intelligent maker. The uh, this world is too intricate and complicated to just have happened. To have just happened, God is its maker, not some it. Admit this fact to yourself. For facts are stubborn things. What direct evidence is there of God, but uh, just besides this complexity? The same complexity has been argued um, for theories without a God. Uh, for example, um, D Richard Dawkins has said that uh, everything in the universe, including the theory of evolution, um, demonstrates that there need not be a God. Also, most of the natural universe are based on chemical reactions uh, of one sort or another. Uh, the universe, uh, uh, stars, for example, um, life or what have you, are based initially on chemical and biochemical reactions which are constantly in flux. So it's entirely possible that given the right conditions, something could, uh, um, simplicity could give rise a bit more to complexity. As well as, um, regardless of that, uh, if you work from M theory, it, they do even have a alternative theory for how our universe came into being, which was that the, uh, a couple of parallel universes bashed into each other and that our universe, um, started as a result of the, of an explosion between two, uh, parallel universes bumping together. And though the mathematics of M theory does suggest that an art a universe could be created artificially, it's a 50-50 shot either way. Because of the fact that, uh, again, the evidence, uh, which is the same evidence is used both for the theists and the atheists, uh, they've used both the same arguments. Um, and the point is that without other evidence either way, it's just a con either way, bottom line is though, is that this, and since there's no evidence directly proving M theory at present, it's also a conjecture. So either way uh, you look at it, Whichever way to suggest that uh, that God exists, God is not a fact, but a theory or a conjecture. It's a, it's an extrapolation from the data that's currently available. A fact would be directly proving God's existence via some indirect evidence that couldn't be accounted for in any other format, uh, or couldn't be accounted for by any other explanation, and will have been repeated several times via replication of science. Okay, next one. Sin is a fact. I don't think I need to read through the full thing. Uh, this one should be uh, sufficient. Sickness, sorrow, and death are the stark realities of sin and its results. You can deny sin all you want, but every funeral service stares you in the face as to the stubborn fact of sin, for death came by sin. Death came by sin, eh? And that, sick, and that's, uh, sickness, and, uh, sickness and death are the stark realities of sin and its results. Problem with this line of logic. Animals die all the time. Every form of life has died. But animals aren't self-aware, and if you're religious, animals don't have souls. So my question is, did they sin? If they don't have souls, and if they're not self-aware, how can they sin? So how do you account for their deaths? Therefore, death is not related only to sin. Also, as well, there's been um, no proof or scientific studies which show that sin, uh, in whatever format you happen to control it, uh, directly causes death. It's a correlation, um, not a direct causation. So the factor may be a contributor, maybe, but even then it's a confusing a correlation with the causation. There is still no evidence provided. All they say is all, um, all hate, envy, cursing, lying, immorality, godlessness, uh, blare out the fact of your sin and mine. That's all they say. Next one, hell is a fact. Some people think that because they do not believe in hell, they shut out the door and pour out the fire. But the stubborn fact remains there is a hell. 
All revelation and reason says men like Hitler, Dillinger, and others did not get their just punishment here. Surely these will not uh, get the same fate in the uh, after this life as the godly holy people who accept the Savior and live for him. There must be a place uh, for punishing sin after this life. Hell says, uh, hell is that place, says God. Facts are stubborn things. Problem with that line of reasoning again. The point is that we could even we could even draw an analogy to that by saying that uh, all guilty people, if they're if they commit a crime in our society, will automatically be caught by the um, will be caught by the state um, or will be you know found guilty. Not necessarily. There are still people, even in our, you know, who even do bad things and get tried and, you know, get tried under our laws and caught, and still escape scot free. One example: O.J. Simpson. O.J. and I'm not going to get into any racial plays here. The forensic evidence was fairly clear uh, from the prosecution side. The defense lawyers, uh, there, even there was a whole thing in relation to chem, uh, chemis, uh, chemicals or what have you. The, um, you know, the defense had basically tried to say that the. Uh, you know the chemicals in there had uh, had basically uh, you know couldn't account for blood, but the prosecute but the fact remains that if the uh, if the articles had been washed or if the uh, anyway basically bottom line the scientific evidence had been uh, sufficiently con uh, con um, reasonable that if they hadn't used a racist cop that proof would have been real beyond a reasonable doubt. Want evidence of that? The fact that O.J. Simpson was co was found get, uh, was found liable for wrongful death of his wife. That evidence was equally good. Um, the only reason that it wasn't uh, found uh, guilty is uh, by you know beyond a reasonable doubt was just because of the fact that the LAPD used a racist police officer. It attacked the credibility of the investigating officer and therefore uh, um, you know uh, put the evidence into doubt supposedly, which is again another ad hominem attack. But you get the idea. But here's the other thing: just to say that just because they didn't get their punishment here, then there's got to be a place for them. There just has to be, uh, is effectively what they're saying here. Uh, there must be a place for punishing sin after this life. Just because you wish something or want something doesn't make it so. That's called wishful thinking, which is a critical thinking fallacy. Last one. Forgiveness is a fact. This same creator, infinite uh, holy God, loved us enough to send his own son without sin to suffer and die for us. Sin is now punished. Divine justice is satisfied. Go um, mercy has been shown. And the sinner can be forgiven simply by believing in his heart that all of this really happened for him too. God forgives us for uh, our sins because his son paid the penalty in full. Now, the problem with that is that regardless of whether or not Jesus actually resurrected from the dead, which is a whole historical debate separately, the problem is, do we actually know that Jesus was the son of God? Again, as we've said before from the first one, God is a conjecture, not a fact. Sorry, God is a conjecture, not a fact. Which means that, again, forgiveness is not a fact. None of these are facts. They're uh, a, co a correlation a wishful thinking, uh, a correlation for sin is a fact, a wishful thinking for hell is a fact. God is a conjecture, depending, uh, and depending on what type of creator, what type of God. I mean, even from the Christian standpoint, there's been no empirical proof of that. And the same goes with the, um, with the Jesus resurrecting from the dead. The point is that, um, you know, whether or not, again, the whole point is, you know, does God actually forgive? Well, the whole point is, does God even exist? So, I guess my point being is that the illogic here is the fact that they're claiming that these are facts and that these are all and that these facts are all stubborn. Like these are, uh, you know, these are stubborn things and that these are actually all facts. None of these are facts. They're all conjectures, some of which are fallacious. At least as far as I can tell. Oh, and they put a kid on the front to say like these are like facts are stubborn things. It's another emotional ploy. And the fact that they do provide one, one only one fact in here, which is that wars exist. You know the very first line here. Again, you can uh, you can uh, doubt, disbelieve, or deny there was a World War or Korean War, but thousands of white crosses um, uh, spotting the cemeteries of the world cry out these were wars. That's even an emotional argument to argue the existence of a fact. You know, I mean there there are plenty of other sources to uh, to show that war has existed, but the point being is that. By trying to compare this, use it. War is even a uh, you know even using uh, f war as a war as a fact as an argument by analogy to say that all these are facts is not even a correct analogy. It's a it's a faulty ar uh, it's an argument by faulty analogy because of the fact that war has been properly documented, um, God's existence and the like. Uh, to say like God wrote this book, therefore he proved himself and. Uh, God exists because God, God wrote the Bible because the Bible says God wrote it is a is a form of tautology or something you know like that and again from this 
sorry, just illogical in this particular case. Toodles. <laughs>